1. This happened when I was around 5 years old at my home. I was in the bedroom and my mom was sleeping in the bed. I was awake. Then I noticed that there was something lying on the chair by the desk that looked like a cat at first. By the way, at the moment our family had a cat and a dog, and I remember seeing both of them in the room. It was a one-bedroom apartment, so don't be surprised that we were all in this room at once. When I approached the chair to see what kind of cat it was, I saw that it was a weird creature, or an entity with the body of a cat, and a head in the form of a pumpkin. As most little children, I didn't fear but rather interest. A desire to pet it, but when I tried to do so, the creature who had been sleeping prior to this moment suddenly hissed at me, which scared me. So after I removed my hand, it went back to sleep. The cat and dog were minding their own business, not noticing anything strange. For many years, I had been sure that it was not a dream, and told this story to my friends when we had conversations about paranormal situations we encountered in our lives. But as I grew older, the feeling that this was absolutely real faded away, and I started questioning this experience, assuming that it was just a vivid dream of a child. But several years ago, I stumbled upon a post in a group of our county's local social network that described the very same creature. I was astonished. Unfortunately, I can't find this post now to reread it. Later, I came back to this memory several times and tried to Google it, but never found any other accounts. Also, this took place in Russia in the early 2000s, where there was no Halloween culture with all this pumpkin stuff. But I admit that I could still see such imagery in an American movie or just forget about it. Interestingly enough, when you Google a cat with a pumpkin head, there are plenty of images of this kind. I think the one that I saw looked more natural, meaning the pumpkin didn't have cut out holes and the head was a part of the body, not just something worn on the head. Has anyone heard of or encountered a creature like the one I described? I am rather skeptical to this story, but I would be interested in hearing more if anyone has something to tell. Two. Hey, so I'm an 18-year-old woman, and about five years ago now I lived in a flat. I'm from the UK, so a flat is an apartment. It was just me and my dad who lived there, and my dad has always been a workaholic. He was away for weeks at a time, weeks alone, which I'd have to fend for myself at 13. I didn't have an issue with this, as I loved the independence, and I loved feeling like I had my own place. But I'll admit, it was a little bit lonely. I didn't have any friends at the time, my parents had just separated and my mom didn't want much to do with either of us, so I never really saw her. A couple of months after moving in, I was home alone. My dad had just gone away for work reasons and he wouldn't be back until the weekend. Everything was going fine, there were no issues at all until I got tired and went to bed. I wasn't deliriously tired, I'm an insomniac, so sleep just sort of evades me most of the time. I'll feel tired until my head hits the pillow, and then my brain comes to life and just will not shut off. But I shut all the lights off and got into bed, and looked over at the foot of it. Something was stood there. It wasn't a person, as there were no features, it was just some sort of shadow stood and not moving, at the end of my bed. I freaked out, obviously, and tried the whole thing of closing my eyes, opening them, etc., he disappeared when I opened them again, but I could still feel eyes on me. Naturally, I assumed that I was just paranoid about being home alone, even though I was completely used to it at this point, and never freaked out or worried about it. So I put the light back on and went to sleep. I tried not to think about it, went to school the next day, got on with life, stuff like that. I've always had a strong imagination anyway. But he was there the next night too stood at the foot of my bed, looking at me. I could feel his eyes on me. He had no face, just some sort of silhouette. But I could feel it. I don't know how else to describe it the way it felt, the way I knew something was there, even if I couldn't see it. It was fucking terrifying, but I was... I don't know, I felt... comforted, almost, by him being there? It didn't feel like he was out to get me. 
It didn't feel like this shadow wanted to kill me or whatever, more like he was watching over me. I don't know, it was weird. I've never been able to properly explain it. I've always brushed it off as some kind of sleep paralysis, but I was never asleep when I saw him. I was never tired or unable to move, never fresh from a nap or some shit like that. I'd be fully conscious and he would be there. Like I said, he wasn't threatening, and I've learned to live with it. Seeing him whenever the lights went out and I was home alone, I was used to it. Then the second one appeared. The second one was smaller, and the only way I can describe it is by saying that he reminded me vividly of the mom from Hereditary, when she's crouched on the ceiling. He stayed in my peripheral at all times, and he first started showing up in the bathroom. I'd be using the toilet, and he would be there, waiting for me. He felt threatening, like he was ready to pounce at any given moment. And it panicked me so badly that I often refused to use the bathroom, wash myself, or brush my teeth. Because he was always in there, even when the light was on. The worst part was I could hear his feet against the ceiling as he chased me whenever I ran out of the bathroom. Like the sound of someone running after you, but his hands and feet were against the ceiling, so it was more like an animal chasing you. I was so fucking scared and I never got used to it. I lost a lot of sleep over that period of time and it continued for about six months until they just stopped. I didn't see either of the shadow things anymore and to this day, I have never been able to explain what it was. I've spoken with counselors about it and their only response is that it's some way of my brain coping with neglect or something like that, but I can't help but feel like it wasn't purely my imagination. Maybe I'm crazy, or maybe there is some sort of psychological reason behind it, but I'll never be able to forget the sound of rapid footsteps behind me, or the feeling of eyes crawling all over me like a thousand bugs as I slept. I've stopped talking to friends about it because they think I'm an undiagnosed schizophrenic or something, but there's something in me that just can't accept my imagination curating all of it. Am I crazy? And if I'm not, what the fuck were they? 3. I did, and still to some extent, consider myself a skeptic until I saw what I saw about a year and a half ago. I've never really posted this anywhere. I only related to my closest family and friends. But some recent events have had this experience playing in my mind again recently. I've also been looking at it from a different angle, and with some recent realizations. So I'm a 20-year-old woman at this point, and this occurred when I was 18 years old and living with my 35-year-old older sister. Things were bad at home with my parents, and she had graciously chosen to take me in at the time. I had been living there for about five months when this occurred. So, my sister's house was two stories tall with an attic. A relatively new house with a modern build in a newer area of town. My room was upstairs. One night I walked upstairs at about 9pm after my routine. Eating dinner, doing the dishes, etc. And I headed to my room to grab my bathrobe for a shower. My sister and her husband both work in the medical field, so their schedules vary at all times. And they had been asleep for hours to wake up at 2 or 3am for a shift. So it was very dark upstairs. The only light that I would keep on so that I could see where I was going was the living room light, which shone bright light downstairs and a dimmer light at the top of the stairs. This was all I needed as my room was about four feet from the right of the stairs. So as I said, I walked upstairs to my room door, which was slightly ajar, and stopped dead in my tracks because I saw a man peeking the top half of his torso and his head from behind my bedroom door. I truly thought this was an intruder at first until I realized his entire silhouette was completely blurry and his center was just black. As I stopped and almost had the big one, whatever this thing was darted back behind the door as if I scared it as much as it had scared me. After about 30 seconds of standing completely frozen and trying to process what I had just seen, I went into my room, checked behind the door and under the bed, looked out the window, and there was no one to be seen. 
About a month later, I had another experience. As I said, there was an attic in my sister's house. They didn't use it much at all, pretty much just put extra boxes up there when they moved in and then left it alone. I was doing dishes one day and I heard what sounded like a jar falling to the floor, which I knew was the attic floor because the second floor was carpeted, and rolling for about 30 seconds before abruptly stopping on the opposite wall. I didn't really make this post for opinions about what I experienced, I am still open to them if you have anything intuitive to offer, as I'm still not sure what it was myself, but I would like to add that I was doing more spiritual work than I had ever done while I was staying with my sister. I was meditating daily, doing work with stones, just generally opening myself more to that side of myself, because of the troubles I was dealing with at the time, and I felt like it helped me as well. I'm not sure why I fell off of that lifestyle, it's Something that I'd like to make a habit of again. Do you guys have any input as to whether or not that might have had any effect on my ability to connect with the other side? Would love to hear thoughts. I'd also like to add that again, I've been a skeptic for a long time and would still pretty much consider myself one. I believe it's incredibly naive of humans to assume they can make definitive conclusions about the afterlife, even though it's something we know nearly nothing about. But I also realize that there are multiple other explanations for what I may or may not have experienced. I'm just looking for an open discussion. 4. So the holidays have been hectic, and no reported issues for a couple of months. No strange things happening under our roof. Well, maybe a strange presence felt once, but nothing that disturbed me. My children sometimes talk about a scary monster, but the scary monster could be anything. A cat, a spider, a bug, a shadow, etc. Literally anything that seems scary is a monster. But tonight has been... eventful. It was a busy day, payday, and my husband got a nice paycheck with commission. Not sure if relevant, but I'd like to describe things and the events leading up to them, possibly my ADHD. So we went shopping and bought some new things. A nice crock pot, ours has been broken for over a year now, an immersion blender, always wanted one, and a new toaster oven, because the other one broke about a week or so ago. The heating element melted and bent inside. Never seen that before. Of course we got groceries and things we needed. We got home. We were both exhausted and put everything away. I got hungry and said, I go get something since I didn't want to make dinner. My husband was in a mood and decided to clean the whole upstairs bathroom. Not gonna lie, we aren't the tidiest and it has been a mess since before Christmas, so it was beautiful and spotless. Ironically, we both talked about how we hadn't seen any paranormal activity lately. This was earlier in the day as we were coming home and I said, it's probably because our house is so dirty and they hate being around the chaos and mess. We both laughed. I felt like my words were coming to bite me now. So after I came home from getting food and we ate, I went upstairs to rest. My cat, Keo, was laying beside me. I'm just chilling. One of my children is sleeping beside me, my little girl. She's sound asleep. Not a peep or stir. And I'm reading on my phone. I'm facing up. My cat just suddenly bolts like he is scared. Rips my face a new one. I'm not exaggerating when I say I had a literal stream of blood going from my cheek to my neck. Luckily, it was just a deep nail indent and not scratches on my cheek. I freaked a bit because I'm feeling warm blood coming down my face. My husband patches me up. Such a sweetie. I don't know what the hell made my cat bolt, but he did it again later. I'm thinking he's just getting a little senile. He's not a jumpy cat, but he is blind in one eye. He's pretty chill compared to the rest of my cats, though. My most loyal boy, too. Always comes when I call. Kind of like a dog, really. I didn't think much of it, though. Not ghost-related, anyways. I was just thinking maybe another cat passed by and batted him and I wasn't paying attention. Arya is sneaky like that. She is my stealth black cat with sharp needles for claws. But he's never been that terrified. Anyways, now everyone is in bed. 
I'm letting Keo sleep next to me and soothing him because even though I was mad at him earlier, I can't blame the poor cat. He just came to lay next to me as I'm typing this. And then I hear it. It sounds like voices. It's been hours since we've gone to bed and I have a tendency to stay up late and read. It happened about 2 a.m. It's 30 minutes past that now. At first I'm thinking it might be the reading machine my mom got from my daughter for Christmas. They love that thing. But I'm realizing this sounds like adult voices and different voices talking to each other. I literally sit up and say, The fuck is that? And my husband, who was snoring, and is now snoring, just stops and wakes up. He hears it too. At first I'm like, did someone break in? That frightened me. And since I thought it might be the dream machine, I checked my children's room first. They were already passed out and nothing was around them. By now my husband had realized it was the TV. And he said he was very certain he turned it off. So was I, because I hadn't heard anything for hours. We both went downstairs. Not gonna lie, I told him to go down because I'm a total wimp. But he said, Can you go with me? I realize we are children, so we both go down. The downstairs is completely dark, because my husband turns off everything before going to bed. And the TV was indeed on. And how, may you ask, are we sure we turned it off? Well, when I first turn on the TV, it goes straight to channels. We don't ever watch these channels. We straight up stream everything. Plus, Cocomelon and Bluey are on three-fourths of the time. It was on some weird-ass karate movie on one of the channels, so... It had to have been turned on. We also don't have a remote for this TV, because my son dunked it in his drink. We still haven't replaced it. We just use our phones, but my husband was asleep, and his phone was dark. He got his phone out when he realized the TV was on, and opened the app and saw it was on. It wasn't opened before, so no way he did it, plus he was asleep. I was reading, and my app wasn't on either. But right before the TV came on, my cat jumped again. Luckily not in my face this time. So something spooked him. He's not one to be spooked, at least not like this. So I believe the spirits come and go in my home. I guess they came to visit once again. One strong enough to turn on my TV, which is creepy to be honest. I mean, maybe we got hacked? That was my second guess, but my cat's reaction makes me think otherwise. What do you guys think? Am I overreacting? Five, my great-grandfather homesteaded in Alaska before all the housing developments and heavy traffic. It used to be a really quiet area, very swampy, super cold in winter. You'd walk through the swamp and hit patches not quite frozen all the way through, even in the deepest part of winter. Now, that in and of itself isn't unusual. Running water doesn't always freeze. It's a geologically active area, like there's reasons for that. However, my great-grandfather spent time in Ireland before settling in Alaska, and he liked to tell how when he was there he rescued a pair of fairies and made a pact with them. In exchange for being able to see things nobody else could, he'd take them with him and provide alcohol to their liking. When he settled in the homestead, so he liked to tell it, he brought the fairies with him. So long as they had a drop of alcohol in good company in the cold of winter, there they'd stay. Now, we did see them on occasion at the swamp. Not just us kids, but the adults too. They looked like fireflies or a ball of light, mostly in white, but you'd see one in red or blue now and again. Not like slightly red or slightly blue, like red M&M or blue M&M, but glowing type of red or blue. We also saw them inside the cabin. Sometimes they'd follow you or collect nearby while we were chopping firewood, but not always. The red one was almost always around when someone got hurt, and we were all fairly convinced it made bad things happen. I'm not sure if people outside of our family saw them, but I do know everyone within my immediate family had at least a handful of direct experience with them. And at least one negative experience with the red light, or fairy as my family always called it, present. The cabin had a sort of lodge-style design, 
The rooms were lofted and to either side of the living room, kind of like in hotels, where there is an open middle section, banisters surrounding it, with rooms on opposite sides. It doesn't really matter, except that from upstairs, you could see either side of wall dividing the kitchen and sunroom. And on more than one occasion, you'd see the little balls of light would hit the wall and just keep going out the other side. You'd also hear whistling sometimes. Kind of an echo of what my great-grandfather sounded like when he was drinking and, as he liked to say, chatting with the fairies in his putter room. It would happen when you were in the swamp and in the house, and when you were the only one on the property at all. The homestead burned down shortly after my great-grandfather passed away, maybe seven years ago. And so far, nobody's in a hurry to rebuild. I do wonder sometimes if the lights are still out there, or the whistling, but I'm not in any rush to go find out. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Paranormal Stories, episode 360. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, hit the like button, thank you kindly. If you'd like to get early access to the video, support me on my Patreon, which is linked in the description, as is a link to the Hellfreezer merchandise store on Teespring. If you especially enjoy today's video, why not leave a tip by clicking that little heart with a dollar sign in the middle. You don't have to do that, but I do appreciate it. Okay, I don't think we have any other business today, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question and answer of the day. And today's question is... What is a tradition passed down to you from your parents that you always will continue? For me, it's pretty simple. It's actually a cooking-related one. Uh, whenever I make either scrambled eggs or an omelette or French toast, just those three dishes... I use a product called Seasonal, right? I think it's kind of like allspice, but I don't think it's the same flavor profile. But, you know, it's just it's a blending of spices. And my family just uses that. That's how I was raised. And it's so yummy, and it really does add a lot of extra flavor, so you don't have to pick out individual ones to make. Haven't had it for a while because <laughs> they brought out different varieties, and sometimes I'm not always sure they have the right one in store without reading the back of the label. But I'm getting a hankering. So I'm going to have to see if I can pick one up soon. Why don't you let me know what your answers are in the comment below. And before we go, let's have the answer of the day. So let's have a look at last week's answers. This was in response to, what if cake disappeared? What would you replace it with? And today's answer comes from AEH Elephant. And their answer is buttermilk pie, my mama's recipe. I've never had buttermilk pie, but I'm willing to try most things as long as they don't have whipped cream in them. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.